Hi, this is Erica Mendez. I am a voice actor for anime and video games, and we are at Fanime. Hey guys, Sal Comedo. Uh, welcome to another video. I am here with a very amazing voice actress. Uh, she has done so many voices in anime and video games. She started as uh, Pac-Man for the Pac-Man and Ghostly Adventures, the video game. She is also known as Aladdin from Magi, Duko Matoi from Kill a Kill, Diane from Seven Deadly Sins, Gone Freaks in Hunter Hunter, the new version, Sailor Uranus from the new Sailor Moon, Yuki from Sword Art Online, Nico Yozawa from Love Live, uh, Cracker Griffin from Gundam, Iron Blooded Orphans. I'm just naming all the my favorite ones. <laughs> Uh, Rickert from Berserk, and I think more recently is Chirito from Anohana, and so many voices for video games as well. Uh, please welcome Erica Mendez. Thank you very much for coming today. Oh yeah, of course. Um, so, I just named so many variety <laughs> of uh, voice actors. Which ones are your favorites? Oh, a lot of the ones you picked are honestly like really good. Um, I don't know. I Ryuko's always going to be like up there because she's done so much for me. Okay. Um, but of course, I mean, I was a huge fan of Love Live before being. Oh really? Me, so, okay. Yeah, my, my best girl is actually Katori. So. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Careful I like Nico there. too. Um, uh, but yeah, I just so and Nico's really special to me and uh, Yuki and um, also uh, when you didn't mention was uh, Subaki and your line April. Ah, um, okay. Yes. That one was really special. Uh, but yeah, there's just so many. It's hard to pick because, I mean, you, like you said, like I They're played, very I've iconic been, characters know, in, really in, in anime. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this, is this your first anime? It is, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, how do you... What, what do you get out of it when walking around and uh, in experiencing it? Um, just, I mean, kind of like... I mean, every con has its similarities and then they have their differences too. I feel like this one just seems a lot more open with things. Okay. Um, so that's kind of nice. It just, it seems like there's a little bit more interaction in a way okay. than other ones. Um, and that's honestly like uh, one of the best parts I think of going to conventions mm -hmm. as a guest is that um, I get to, you know, talk with the fans mm -hmm. and I haven't done autographs yet, but I'm sure oh, okay. like that'll be a, a great experience because mm -hmm. it's nice too get up and close and you know see what things that people like that they bring for me to sign and then right. we get to have little conversations about things because right. i like i like geeking out about this stuff too so. right yeah. yeah i heard you like anime and video yeah, games and stuff yeah. so it's kind of like um like the motto of this convention is for fans by fans mm. so what do you think of that ideal I, I think that's perfect i mean like you said i i definitely was a fan uh before i started voice acting and I mean, I'm still a fan. Um, so I think having something that's a lot more, instead of like industry based, I think it's it's good to have the stuff that gives back to the fans mm. because they do a lot for the right. industry, you know. Right. Okay. So uh, how did you get started in voice acting? I uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I just for like fun, I would do a lot of online projects okay. um, here and there. Like nothing I got paid for, obviously. Uh, and then eventually I, well, I got, I'm from Chicago. Okay. I got my degree in animation. Okay. Uh, so I've got a bachelor's in arts in animation that I've never used. Uh, <laughs> it's paid a lot of money in for nothing. In a different way you're using Yeah, it. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's totally unrelated, but it's, I mean, it's sort of related. It's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right. With, <laughs> I don't know, animation. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I, I got the degree and I decided to move out to California okay. with my boyfriend who also does voiceover. Right. And um, I was perfectly fine just like letting him do his thing. Right. Um, uh, but because I had a little bit of experience, I had friends who were already kind of mm -hmm. making their way in the industry that would uh, kind of give me a heads up about opportunities and stuff like that. So oh, I'd get to audition here and there. I right. uh, didn't really book anything for the first year of moving there. Uh, but I eventually started taking classes with Bing Zoom, uh, their adventures in voice acting classes. And Tony oh, Oliver, okay. who is very iconic in the world of right. anime, he teaches those classes. And oh, after taking okay. a few of them, uh, he... I guess liked me enough to recommend me to the studio oh. and I started getting you know auditions here and there but it wasn't until Pac-Man that uh, I think the studio was finally like oh okay that's what you do oh, okay. young boy voices okay so we're gonna <laughs> throw all those at you and then uh, luckily I've broken out of that young boy box right um, but uh, I do enjoy playing characters like that so it I mean obviously I don't regret any of it because right. you know uh, young boy voices are definitely I think would help me get my foot in the door right. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like, let's talk about the industry a little bit. Uh, how do you really get into it? Or does it sound like it's 
who you know and um, like how who you interact with in the industry? Yeah, I think it's a little different uh, for everybody. Um, I definitely think I was in the right place at the right time, and I okay. did you know know a few people, but it wasn't anyone that was like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know book you for this job. Uh, I had to make those connections right. throughout you know my experience, and um, but yeah, some you know some people get in through knowing people. Some people get in because other people know of them and they decide uh, to bring them into things. Because right. I've been like requested for jobs before. So oh, okay. Based off like um, people knowing my work right. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to give a specific a specific way because everybody has their own story. You know? Oh, okay. So I mean, can you go through like a typical recording day or like, okay, let's start before that, like rehearsals or how do like people contact you or you contact them or? Uh, usually the way it works is um, you, however you manage to get in with the studio. Okay. Um, once you get in with them, you're generally on their like audition roster. Oh, I so see. So depending on what they think you're suited for and if those characters come up a lot, they'll send you auditions for those characters. Um, and it just so happens like there are a few studios that I work with more than others. Uh, Bang Zoom in particular does happen to okay. be a, a large chunk of my work. Um, but it's hard to give a typical day because it's very it's a very atypical job. Uh, um, I see. Okay. There are times when you know I'll have I'll have a session a week or I'll have like three sessions in a day, you know, or oh, like I'll okay. have a week full of sessions, and it's just very. It's very sporadic, okay. um, so you kind of have to find like potentially, especially if you're only doing video, Japanese video games and anime, you mm -hmm. have, might have to find other sources of income. Uh, like I right now, I I just started a script adaptation, okay. so that's like helping me pay my rent a little bit easier. Right. Um, not that I was doing bad before, but um, it's just nice to have that extra like support. Right. But yeah, it's typical days aren't aren't very typical <laughs> in this career. Well, maybe I mean like, um, do you just go into the studio and you record dialogue? Because it sounds like you usually do it all by yourself. Like I yeah, don't think people right. realize, oh, maybe you're working with other people right, or, yeah. or you talk to other people, but right. I mean, yeah, can I mean, you kind of elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, if you're lucky, you get to see people in passing, uh, oh, whether or not they're okay. recording on the same show. But uh, yeah, typically in anime and Japanese video games, we tend to work alone. Um, so it's, you get called in, uh, you know, that week. If you're lucky, you'll get called in a month in advance, but it usually doesn't happen. Okay. It's usually like the day before they're like, hey, can you come in tomorrow? And it's like, yeah, sure, I'm not, you know, doing right, anything. Or, no, we have to do it another day. So you go into the studio um, when you finally decide on a time. And you, if it's a new project, you'll, uh, you know, meet with the director, whether you know uh, them okay. or not already. And then sometimes there's a client there. So you talk with the client and they describe the project to you and the character. And then usually the first session is you, like, establishing the character mm -hmm. so you get to like set the voice and maybe based off your audition or if, even if you you know if you did audition because sometimes they just cast you based oh, on okay. other stuff so they'll set the voice and they'll be like uh maybe we want like a little bit deeper we want a little bit younger or something like that so that takes a while sometimes oh, really? um it can uh, if you don't click with it right away but uh yeah so then you just you do your lines. Um, if it's dubbing, it goes a little bit slower because you're matching picture, and that you know takes its own skill. Uh, video games go very quickly oh, because really? sometimes you get context, sometimes you don't. So you're generally just like reading lines down a piece of paper. Basically. Oh, okay. They like give you a beat to clue you into where you're when the next line they're ready to start. Oh, I see. So, um, but yeah, it's just like boom, 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 boom. Maybe they'll want you to do two takes. Maybe they won't, okay. depending on how much time they have. So like video games and series, does it take like a few recordings or? It depends, it depends on, the on the character. character. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So if it's a longer um, series, for example. If it's a longer series. Like Kill a Kill, for example. For for anime, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I don't think I've worked as much on something oh, as okay. far as anime goes uh, than I have for Kill a Kill because that one in particular, like, they wanted to be a lot more precise with it and uh, like take a lot more time. So um, yeah, I I did. Yeah, those are long sessions for sure. <laughs> but usually uh, things, yeah, even for anime, tend to go a little bit faster because the budgets are so tiny and they want to, like, you know, get it right. done, you know. Uh, not They don't want to, you know, throw it away, obviously. Right. They do take time on it still. But some, I think, get taken a little bit more care of than others in Kill a Kill with, and Sword Art were definitely, I think, two of those projects. Okay. So, I mean, you are a fan of anime, video games, and stuff like that. So... I'm sure, I mean, do you watch some of these animes before they're actually dubbed? 
Uh, sometimes, uh, usually, right now the only thing I have time for is if I feel like researching something beforehand, uh, I'll watch okay. something before I get cast in, or when I get the casting announcement, I'll, I'll watch but it. But like on episodes. your free time or whatever? Uh, it depends. I started, I want to say the most recent thing I tried watching that I wasn't in was Orange. Okay. Um, just because I, I had heard it was like Your Lie in April, and I really enjoyed that oh, okay. series. So I haven't finished it still because no time. Right, uh, yeah. But I, I play more, more video games, I think, than I watch anime okay. lately. So what's your what's your playing right now? Right now, uh, I'm still finishing Breath of the Wild. Of okay, course. Zelda. Um, right. And then Tales of Berseria, which is cheating because I'm in that. But <laughs> I would have been playing it anyway, I feel like. But I think next on my list is... Uh, Have you played the other Tales games? Or? Yeah. Okay. Abyss is actually my favorite. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to totally get into them since then, but Berseria was definitely the like turning point where I was like, oh my god, Tales games are like, I can actually enjoy them again. And um, just adding your voice is like the Oh the yeah, top, for the, sure, for sure. <laughs> top the cake, right? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Does that feel weird when you're playing the game and it's like, oh, that's my voice? Or... It can be a little jarring, um, yeah. but I feel like if I'm able to get past that, that's when I know I did a good job. Right. Because if I'm too busy worrying about like, oh man, I should have done that differently, or uh, like, I wish I would have spent more time on that, then that's when I'm like really distracted by it. But otherwise, like if I'm able to immerse myself, then I'm like, yeah, this is, I'm happy with this. You know? That's cool. Yeah. So uh, what, is the, what is the thing that you enjoy the most about voice acting? Um, hmm. I think in a way I feel like, because I was a fan at first, I feel like I'm kind of giving back, I mm, think, because okay. it's kind of like a paying it forward thing in a weird way, because, um, you know, I had voice actors that I looked up to uh, when I was, you know, just watching anime and playing video games for, you know, more than just a career, right. or less than just a career, I guess, technically. Um, so now being on the other side, like I have people that come up to me and they're like, oh my God, you know, you inspire me. So oh, I basically I feel see. like I'm taking the inspiration from the people that I was inspired by and giving it back to people. Okay. So that's always cool. Um, and it shows a lot more when I go to conventions, which is why I right. go to so many. Cause I'm just like, I feel like I need to, I know, contribute something back oh, see, to, to the community. Cause I was so, I was one of the fortunate ones, I feel like. Um, but yeah, and just. Uh, lately, my thing uh, going to conventions has been going to Artist Alley. Okay. So I love seeing the creativity uh, of the fandoms that I enjoy. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I mean, have you been to a lot of conventions? Mm. Okay, how many I conventions am. do you go to a year? Uh, I'm trying to slow down. I've been slow doing, down. Okay. I've been doing way too many. Um, not that it's a bad thing necessarily, but I oof, last year I did 16. 16, okay. Yeah, the year before wow. that I did 15. So I did like a huge con marathon over the last two years. This year I think I'm at a total of, by the end of the year I'll be at a total of like 12. Oh, okay. But I'm trying to slow down because I don't want to like totally oversaturate myself. I now. see. So I want to give, well, that sounds a little egotistical, giving other people a chance to like take those spots at conventions. <laughs> but uh, I, I, should, I feel like I should distance myself a little bit so people don't get uh, sick of me, you know? I see. <laughs> But I mean, this is the kind of chance also to meet with the other voice actors oh, yeah, in the same yeah. series and stuff like that. I mean, how is the relationship between them? Yeah, it's. Uh, I've been fortunate to be in a lot of good shows with a lot of good people. Yes. So I've, uh, you know, made a lot of good friends. Uh, me and Lauren Lando, who's also a guest at Fanime this weekend. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. She's Sailor Neptune. Right. My you had a Uranus. Sailor Moon panel. Yeah, we just did that actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I've gotten to know her a lot better since working on Sailor Moon, and we do a lot of conventions together now, of course. And yeah, it's just been really great. Because um, a lot of the times we're too busy to hang out. Back uh, right, at home, right. so it's nice to kind of have a moment where we're working but not working, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just have a moment to like catch up and have lunch and you know meet up over coffee or drinks or whatever. So. Right. So let's talk about each of the different kind of roles. Well, at least the anime that I like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit biased, but Pac-Man. How do you feel about that voice acting job? Uh, I felt great about it because yeah. it was my first gig ever. Uh, it was actually a voice match, so I don't do the... A lot of people think I did the TV show, but I only oh, did the video game. Okay. So it was a voice match project. They wanted me to voice match as much as I could the oh, woman who plays Pac-Man on oh, the, the TV series. Uh, but yeah, I actually, I mean, it was really fun. It was super intimidating because, like I said, it was my first big job, and I was I mean, basically completely new at that point. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's just... How many people get to say they're Pac-Man, you know, like, especially... For I don't, I mean, I can't imagine because he doesn't really talk. He goes, exactly, bum, 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 bum. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 
but it's yeah, it's just it's crazy just being a uh, iconic right. video game character like that. I mean, regardless of the games, you know, many people play the game or right. not, but it's still like I think a really big achievement. Okay, so Kill a Kill. That's it's one of my favorite animes <laughs> of well, the last maybe like five ten years. Okay. And I think when it first came out, it really became really popular. Oh yeah. Um, especially since I think in the beginning it's like, what kind of anime is this? Um, <laughs> And then it gets like progressively like oh there's a story oh it's really exciting yeah. oh it's, you know I don't miss, but I don't want to spoil anything but I mean how do you feel about like Kill a Kill and how it kind of inspires people to like dress up or do all kinds of voice acting or other things like yeah. that yeah um, I I mean I feel honestly great about it I didn't think Kill a Kill was gonna be my type of show when I first saw it because that was one of the shows that I was like okay, I'm going to watch this because I know it's going to be big. Um, they're right. probably going to make a dub, so it would be see. like sort of research. Um, so I was watching it, and I'm like, what, what is this? Like, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. And then I kept watching, and I was like, no, I can't stop. Like, yeah. It's just so like appealing visually and just plot-wise right. And when you get into the good stuff, you know. Um, but, yeah, because I usually like slice-of-life shows, which are very like calm and like they get emotional and stuff I heard like it's that. a Fruits Basket fruits is your basket favorite. Fruits Basket is, yeah. Yes. Fruits okay. Basket is my favorite. So that's why I like, like you know, Your Line April and, and Orange. Right. And now Anahana. Um, but yeah, Kill a Kill really took me by surprise um, at how much I actually enjoyed that. And that's like, which I'm not just saying it because I'm in it. Right. Like, I actually enjoyed the show. Because um, some people like assume, oh, you're just, you know, you're saying that because <laughs> you're, you're an actor and you have to say that. Right. But no, I like actually really liked it. And I think all the characters are are really well thought out and and I like that it's, it's usually I'm not into like fan service stuff but I like that it's kind of fan service with a purpose right and it's equal fan service right. so there's like fan service for guys and there's girls. fan service right, for girls right. so I think it was really um, different for mm -hmm. you know the, a time even now like there's so many shows that are just like oh look it's a harem anime or like it's right. a, there's like a million and you can't really describe this type of anime yeah but yeah. yeah but yeah, I like that it, it just kind of broke the boundaries right and did it in a really cool way awesome so how about love life <laughs> you said you already talked about your best girl but yeah. um I mean, have you really fallen into idle hell, as they call it? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, with Katori being my favorite, like I was pretty sure that I was going to just like only buy Katori and maybe Maki stuff because Maki's my second okay. favorite. Um, and then I got cast because so I. Where's Nico in this? <laughs> and Nico's like my third now. Okay. She's like jumped up since being cast as her. Because oh, at see. first, because my thing with Love Lie was I I hadn't watched the anime at first. Uh, I was playing the mobile game. Okay. So a lot of. But you hear the music though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so a lot of Nico is just her going Nico Nico Nico. Nico <laughs> you know, so it gets annoying it's after cute, a while. No, it's cute. It definitely grew on me. But uh, watching the anime really made me appreciate uh, her a lot more because you find out that she's more than just like the bratty, you right. know, bossy character. Um, but yeah, I definitely, definitely an idol hell. Um, I <laughs> have you seen all the cosplays out there? There's so many. I haven't gotten stuff. a chance to see too many Love okay. Live cosplayers yet. But there's a lot of stuff in the artist alley yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, I've spent money on the game more than I'd like to uh, admit. And now I have a lot of, uh, I, <laughs> I started getting into the whole Ida bag thing. Ah, so I have a Nico one. Do you? Um, I don't have it with me this weekend. Okay. But I do have like a big one. And it's got like a bunch of keychains I've collected. And I've got a bunch of figures of Nico. Wow. And uh, I just actually bought tickets for uh, the Aqua concert. Oh, did you? Uh, Anime Expo? Expo yeah. Wow, okay. So I'm not like. That's a little bit funny. It's uh, Idol Master versus Love Line I know, yeah. Versus I'm, Wake Up Girls. I'm not as. <laughs> into the new season okay. uh, just because I feel like I'm still very attached to Muse, but oh, I, see. Um, I feel like I want to go to this one just to support just the series in general. Right. And because, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to see Muse, you know, at right. this point unless they do a reunion tour, which right. who knows if they'll do that. But they'll probably do that in Japan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be nice if it was worldwide. But I feel like this is like my chance to kind of get to experience idol culture like that right. in person. So, because I saw the the final live and I was Oh, did you? Up. I was so torn oh, up. Oh, did you watch it on TV or the actual uh, event? No, I, I bought the, the Oh, Blu -ray. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I knew some people that actually went to Japan just for that. Oh my gosh. I considered, but I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> Mobile Suit Gundam. That's, that is my favorite Gundam series as right now. It's oh, yeah. very dramatic, very realistic, very yeah. gritty. Um, I know you're playing one of the minor 
Is it Mocha? Like one of the sisters of one yeah, of the characters. Yeah, they're pretty minor. Um, but I mean, how did you feel about that character? Um, I like the the, the dynamic because you're right. It is a very like gritty hard series, but it's it's nice that there are these two little characters that are not much, but they're thrown in there for as kind of like a comedic relief kind of thing. Right. Um, well, their then, names are kind of funny, right? Yeah, their <laughs> names are funny, and then they do like silly things. Like one of my favorite things. Uh, from Cracker in that show is when she starts laughing about the butt-shaped tomato. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, that part was really funny. And then, uh, and then, but then you, you start to, you know, feel bad for them later right. because of spoilery yeah, well, stuff yeah, that spoilers. happens. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and then we just actually finished, I think we finished? I'm not even sure if we finished recording season two. Well, it just but, finished uh, recently in Japan, so probably you... Yeah. You haven't gotten to the final, final end, but yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. No I know spoilers. I just, I went in, <laughs> I went pretty recently, and uh, there wasn't much. There, it was weird because I feel like they made a big deal about the sisters coming back. Uh -huh. Like they, they showed them in the promotional trailer. Right. Uh, but then they're not really even in that that much, right. from what I've seen. And uh, but I near, I also near played... the end they'll be back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't I, know if that's spoilers for you. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe I, I thought I recorded the last one. Okay. Because I know that uh, Kyle McCarley, who plays uh, Mika, um, went in for his last session. So. Okay. So, I don't know, maybe. But uh, I also play another character named Elgar, and he's actually in that one more than, uh, yeah, that's, yes. than uh, Cracker is. Right. So. But that's, it was fun. Yeah, I, I mean, Gundam is definitely... I'm not, like, huge into Mecha, but I love G Gundam and ah. Zero Wraith MS team. So it's just... You Doma. Know, it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's an honor just to be a part of anything Gundam, really. Yeah. Awesome. What is some of your favorite video game characters that you've voiced? That I've voiced? Uh, Eleanor from Berseria is definitely mm, okay. way up there. Just because right. Tales was just a dream franchise that I wanted to be a part of. Um... I didn't get to do much in it, but Street Fighter uh, Five. I play yeah. Satsuki, one of the dolls. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's funny. I played a character named Riko and Satsuki. Um, but uh, yeah, just being in Street Fighter, I think, is just an amazing thing because that's a game that I played when I was a kid. So, right. Um, but I hope she. It'd be nice if she became playable, so I could actually <laughs> go in and do more. But right. I, I don't know the future of that. So. Have you been in any other fighting games, or? Um, I play Naoto Rei in Dead or Alive Five. Oh, okay. Um, she was cute. I don't get to play characters like that very often. She's okay. very apologetic. She's oh, a, I see. She's like a, a cameo character from uh, Samurai Warriors, I think. Oh, um, okay. And she's right, never right, been right. dubbed before. Oh, so, really? Because they don't dub those games. Right. So they brought her in for Dead or Alive and. They had auditions for her because they, I guess all the, I think all the characters are dubbed in that one, but I'm not entirely sure. I think so. But yeah, yeah it was it was cool getting to play like the kind of like quiet, like shy. We have know? to do like those grunts and the kicks yeah. and the punches and stuff, right? Yeah, those are exhausting. They're more <laughs> exhausting than I think people realize. Because it's not like you do it once. Like how many times you got to? Yeah, do it? you got to do it a few times because they need different ones. Because right. They, I mean, sometimes they get annoying anyway. But they don't want them to be like the same repetitive. Uh, this has to be one. kind of a different time, yeah. depending on where they get hit. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you'll get hit in the head or like right. the gut or like the arm. Or right. Like you'll do your death scream and like stuff like that. So yeah, it's a bunch of different noises. Okay. The one of my well, it's not. It's one of my favorite. My cousin's favorite game is Puyo Puyo. Oh yeah. So you're one of the main, uh, I guess, characters of that game. Adele? Is it Adele? Uh, Adele? Arl. 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 Yeah. Arl. Okay. That my cousin's gonna kill me with. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot he, of characters. He in loves that, that game very much. So yeah. just kind of like, how did, how did you get into Puyo Puyo? Uh, that one was actually like a surprise to me because they just called me in and oh, they're really? like, hey, you're gonna play this character, and I was like, oh, cool. And then I found out that it was uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, and I didn't actually know Puyo Puyo by name. Mm -hmm. I knew the character, the Puyo Puyo like sprites though because right, of I played Dragon Quest kind of type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the little slime looking things. Yeah, the slimes. I uh, I actually played Kirby's Avalanche to oh, death when okay. I was a kid and I guess that's a reskinned version of Puyo right. Puyo. So I was super excited when I found out because I was like, oh my god, I get to play like a game like that again. Yeah. So I, I bought it, of course. Oh, and, did you? <laughs> and I've been playing the story mode. It's actually really cute. Yeah, like, it is. There's, there's a lot of like fun characters and just the silly dialogue that they have, and, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, great. So, um, what, char okay, what character would you want to play in the future that you haven't done yet? Oh, I don't know about characters specifically, but I really would love to be in a Persona game. 
Uh, like I love <laughs> Persona's like one of my well I don't want I, can't, I don't want to be a poser and say that I like played like all the Shin Megami Tensei games because I haven't but Persona 4 is like one of my all time favorite okay. JRPGs you haven't played so. Persona 5? I own it okay but, so I know what you're talking about <laughs> um, but I haven't played it yet because I'm still like I don't have a lot of time to play video games uh, as much as I'd like so I'm still working through Berseria like I said in Breath of the Wild but Persona 5 is definitely one of the next ones on my please, list. Please. I hear it's please. amazing. I haven't finished it either, but <laughs> I'm taking my time. <laughs> I know. I was super hype about it when it got announced, so I, I really can't wait to play it. Right. Well, I mean, there's other Shimigami Tensei hopefully it'll bring out, because maybe Persona 6 will be, take another 20 years. It's another 20, yeah. It'll be, just be increasing <laughs> yeah. by, as the time goes by. Great. <laughs> so, I mean, if you weren't a voice actress, what do you think you'd be doing as a different job? Uh, maybe I'd actually do something with that animation degree I mentioned okay. earlier. Um, I did like drawing a lot when I was a kid, so um, now I'm out of practice, so I can hardly draw uh, at this point in my life. But yeah, I think maybe I would have like stuck my guns to that a little bit more, and I don't know, maybe I would have been like character designing or something, mm, you know? Yeah. Cool. So uh, so let's go back to voice acting in general. Uh, how do you think it has changed over the years since you've been doing it? Oh, well, I've been doing it for like four years now, so I still okay. feel like a baby in the industry. Um, I feel like it doesn't necessarily affect me, but the whole like broadcast up thing I think is really changing the game. Ah, like um, the simultaneous one. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're doing those down in Texas, so in Los Angeles where I work, we don't really get a lot of those. Um, okay. But I feel like it's... Because uh, for a time, I think they were trying to bring a lot more LA actors mm -hmm. down in Texas to like vary up their shows because they were getting so many of them. But now with the broadcast dubs, they can't really do that because they right. need people local because local, they don't know what's going to happen to those characters. Right. Um, I've been lucky enough to, like, I have friends down there who do direct, so when they get a DVD show that they don't have to, like, rush, um, they'll call me in for stuff. Like, I was recently, uh, uh, it just came out, uh, Gothic. I was a, a character okay. in that. It's like an anime from, like, seven, nine years ago, something okay. like that. But, um, yeah, so I got to work on that, like, a few months back, uh, last or, few months back it was like last year um and then I just went down for something I can't talk about yet but once, okay. once I can I will um but yeah so I think like the opportunity to get work in other places I think is not as feasible anymore mm -hmm. um and then as far as stuff that actually happens in LA um I think I feel like I had always assumed, and I did a few like this, where uh, video games, they would already be out mm -hmm. in Japan, so you could right. research stuff right. about them. But now, like, Tales of Berseria we did before it, the game was even out in Japan. Oh, wow. So okay. I couldn't look up anything about the character, wow. you know? And I've done a few games now that they're not, there aren't even trailers out for the game right. in Japanese. Right. Wow. So it, you can't. Like, so you can't even research. talk about it either. You can't talk about it. You can't research it. Uh, you don't know what your character looks like half wow. the time because they don't have any like actual art for you to look at. So, so how do you prepare for that? I mean, do they tell you at least the character? Uh, they yeah, they tell you stuff? about the character, and the good thing is for stuff like that, the clients usually there, so they'll like uh, the actual artist or whatever. Uh, not the artist, but like the the localization oh, uh, okay. like manager or producer. So they'll be there and. They get word directly from Japan, so they'll um, they'll decide like based off that what's right for the character and what's not and stuff like that. So they'll kind of like steer you in the right direction, and then you know with a good director, of course, you'll have um, uh, they'll they'll you know do their best to kind of convey the messages between the, right, the client and, and all that. So yeah. Cool. Okay. Is there any new projects you can talk about right now, or? Oh well, you mentioned Puyo Puyo that came out pretty recently. Yeah. Um, Akiba's Beat. Uh, I played, Akiba Beat. Oh, yeah, okay. Saki Hoshino, the the main female. In that okay. One. I haven't played that one yet. I own it, but uh, one day I'll play it. Um, <laughs> it. There's just such a huge backlog yeah, right now. Yeah, time enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many games this year that came out. Um, I was a bit part in Near Automata. Oh, okay. Um, so I play like little robots and stuff like okay. that, and some of the the Yorha units. Um, and then Gothic just came out. Uh, the physical release of Seven Deadly Sins was oh, just released. Okay. Right. Um, and the OVAs are on Netflix. That's not super new news, but right. um, that's something to bridge the gap between whenever season two comes out. I have no idea. Right. Why well, the longest? I'm way ahead. Oh, okay, so you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's. I 
feel like I'm probably forgetting something, but uh, that's all I can think of right now. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for interviewing with me. Yeah, of course. And so can you tell people where you can find you, social media, whatever? Yeah, I have uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. My uh, Twitter and Instagram are both Sunderica. It's T S U N D E R. E R I C A. That's how you spell my name. Um, <laughs> and then Facebook. I always forget the URL, but it's either Eric Mendez Voice or Eric Mendez V O. Great. I'll leave all the links down below. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Thanks for watching. We're at Fanime 2017. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe.